Hi, my name's Hugh from SRI, and this video we're going to show you how to get the rotor out of the gas sampling valve. So the gas sampling valve typically lives in this oh, area here we call a valve oven, right? This GC has two of these valve ovens. Tube and the valve, we've covered the valve operation in, a, in another video, but inside the valve there's a, a part called a rotor, right? The rotor is what actually moves when the valve is actuated and the rotor and, and looks like looks valve. like this. It has five tiny little grooves machined into this Teflon part of the rotor and the little well, grooves well, line up with the holes on the outside of the, of the valve, right? So when the valve rotates, the, this hole, which is now connected to this hole, changes so that this hole is connected to that hole. So every hole switches neighbors. It switches to its left neighbor or its right neighbor. And sometimes if the valve is not functioning properly for some reason, it can be fixed by replacing this rotor. What would happen is usually the yeah. rotor gets clogged up with something, like you're injecting something that has salts or, or some other non-condensable, non-vaporizable material, and it ends up getting stuck in there. No. So the that's apart. not good for the rotor, but sometimes you can fix it by replacing the rotor or taking yeah. the rotor out and cleaning it. You can take a toothbrush and try to clean the gook out that, are, that might accumulate in the little grooves and then put it back in. So I'm gonna show you how to get it out of the GC, which is a little more difficult when it's in the GC. So we'll do it on, um, on this valve here. Right, so, so this piece of tubing here that looks like a coil is what's called the loop, right? And I'm just gonna kind of push it out of the way so that I have an easier time accessing this. And then the valve has this knurled. Knurled is this kind of this rough surface that, that kind of tells you that this is something that you normally would, would hand tighten rather than tighten with a wrench, right? So it's a little too tight for me to open it now. It tends to get kind of stuck in there once you tighten it up. Even though you, t you tighten it by hand, you usually need a pair of pliers to untighten it, at least the first little turn. So I'm gonna take my pair of pliers here and grab it and then give it a little twist. Okay, so that was, it took a little bit of strength to do that. But once I get it going, I should be able to get the rest of the way out by hand. Now, what's in here, sometimes people think that they need to, to loosen this hex thing here. What this is called is called a preload, right? There's a spring inside here and a stainless steel ball, and the, the spring pushes on the stainless steel ball, and how tight the spring pushes is determined by how tight this hex thing is. So you're really not supposed to adjust it. There's a little dab of paint so that they can tell at the factory if you have adjusted it and that voids the warranty. So usually these things have been out of warranty for 10 years by the time you need to do that. So you can do this, don't be afraid to turn it, but you're changing the way the valve works when you tighten, because they adjust this to the point where the valve stops leaking at a certain pressure. So you don't really want to change that. So it's the entire knurled nut that you remove, not this little um, adjustment nut in the middle. So here's the rotor, right? It's down there, it's in the valve, right? And it, it, it looks like this, and you really can't tell which direction it was originally unless you take a Sharpie and put a mark here. We usually put the mark toward the back side of the GC, but it really doesn't matter as long as you can keep it straight. But that's what we do is we, we, we do it toward the back side of the GC. So now the trick is how do we get that little rotor out? A lot of times it's pretty much stuck in there. Right, so I have a little magnet at the end of this, and if I'm lucky, see how I was able to use the magnet to, to grab the rotor and pull it out? And this one looks pretty good, except you can see that there's one little groove that has a lot of dirt, right? So when I put it back in, let's say I clean the dirt out. This doesn't look bad enough to really make a big deal about at this point, but you, you should look in the valve itself because the, the surface that this rotor rotates against has to be extremely smooth to avoid leaks from one hole to the other. So you, you, it's a good idea to take a flashlight and look inside here, as long as you've got the rotor out, you look inside and you can see, I, I can see that there's a, there's a place on the valve that looks like it's, it's worn a little bit. It, instead of being shiny, it may not come up on the video very easily, but instead of being shiny, it's kind of rough looking. So that probably lines up with this dirty groove, right? And it does, I, I think that's, let me make sure I'm not 
saying something that isn't true. No, it doesn't. There's one other thing to, to notice about this, and that's that on the underside of the valve rotor, there's a, a, a letter. In this case, it's the letter E, which is the most common thing. It, it tells you the temperature um, range of the, of the polymer material. In this case, it's good from ambient to 225 degrees is what the E rotor is. There is another kind of a rotor that's good for higher temperature and another one that's really better at, at very low temperatures. But this one is the common one because it's pretty much does everything. And then I can see my little magic marker mark. So when I put this back in, I, I want to put it back in so that the magic marker mark is toward the back. Because if you put it in the opposite direction, which you can do, then the valve operates backward. Instead of being in the load position, it's in the inject position and vice versa. So that can be confusing. So it's better to put the magic marker mark on there first so that you, at least you can put the rotor back in the same orientation that you removed it from. So you can feel it when it kind of slides into the little groove that it sits in. See how the, it's got a little, it's got a little um, raised area here that fits into a groove and that's what the motor turns. So now I'm gonna tighten this back up, right? And usually you can go pretty much all the way to being completely tight with your fingers and then use the, the pair of pliers to just make sure that it's really tightened down all the way. You don't have to really struggle with it, just make sure it's, it's snug. And that's really all there is to changing a rotor.